Hello, Vusi. My name is Flint. I am Zimbabwean, but I live in Rustenburg, South Africa. I really loved today's podcast on compounding your time. My biggest take from this was that one hour of my time today is worth one week 20 years from now. It really tells me how much I need to use my time consciously. Thank you so much for the wonderful lesson that I got from this and all the lessons that were gained from your teachings and motivations. I'm really looking forward to VT Club 100 as much as I'm looking forward also to the new book coming up. Thanks a lot. Please keep teaching us in the same manner. God bless. Cheers. It's time to take your seat at the table. Find out how with Vusi Tembeguayo as we discuss ideas that matter. A catalyst for bold action. Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of the VT Podcast where we talk about ideas that matter. That was Flint. Hi, Flint. Flint from Zimbabwe. Every time I hear Zimbabwe, I must confess, the first thing that happens in my mind... And, uh, all right, uh, I'm going to do it anyway. But the first thing that happens in my mind every time I hear Zimbabwe is I, I get like this image of Robert Mugabe standing in front of the African Union, I think it was. It wasn't the United Nations delivering his speech and he's telling uh, Tony Blair, who at the time was the Prime Minister of Britain, off, and he says, Blair! Keep your Britain and leave me my Zimbabwe. <laughs> I really should like make a go with it. I feel like what I should do is launch an app with voiceovers and, and you know, people can like download the voiceovers, right? The, I, was, I was playing with my, uh, my son the other day and, uh, and he and I were doing um, Transformers. And I, I, you know, he was like, Dad, you actually, you, you sound exactly like I'm Optimus Prime. <laughs> Autobots. <laughs> ah, you know what I love about this podcast, can I be completely honest, is we live in a world today of just so much negativity and dark energy that I feel like you tune into this podcast just because you want to put a smile on your face, you want to elevate yourself, you want to open up your heart, you want to experience the world in a manner that is new. So... Yeah. Um, welcome to the VT Podcast, where we talk about ideas that matter, family. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, that was Flint, a brother from Zimbabwe, now living in Rusty Dusty, Rustenburg. Uh, Flint, by the way, uh, there, there is, uh, we'll, we'll get to it later, but let's just say that the young ladies of Rustenburg have a reputation for being heartbreakers. So from one brother to another, wear the armor, brother, wear the armor. This week, family... I want to talk to you about blood is thicker than water. So our topic this week is blood is thicker than water. Most people are not aware that the actual expression has become misused and people have misappropriated it. The expression as we have it today is this idea that your family with whom you share a bloodline, that that relationship is thicker than the relationships you form in the world. That's actually not what the saying means. The full saying, the expression, is a medieval proverb. It comes and talks about familial bonds that are formed, but that are stronger in love than actual relationship bonds. The oldest records of this, of this expression trace it back to the 12th century in Germany. And the full expression is the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. The idea, written first, uh, it's noted in 1180 by uh, Reinhard the Fox or Reinhard Furcht in Germany, was this idea that when they were sending young men specifically into the field of war, that once these young men would arrive at the field of war, and as brothers fight in a war and blood spilt over the covenant of defending their tribe or their nation, that those relationships would be stronger than the relationships of people with whom they share kinship, people with whom they shared the water of the womb. Blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. 
1412, the English priest, John Lydgate, observed in the Troy book, which is a great book, by the way, he said, For naturally blood will be of kind, drawn to blood, where he may find it. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about this, about this blood being thicker than water, because I wanted to ask you, with whom in your experience in the world have you formed blood covenant relationships? A lot of us, and if I may be candid here, I want to talk specifically, but not exclusively, to my African brothers and sisters. A lot of us, it's true, isn't it, often get guilted into all kinds of relationships with our families, and the guilt is served on the plate of blood being thicker than water. And so your, your talents, your abilities, your networks, and sometimes even the little money that you have is exploited by family members who've not added value to your life under the guise of blood being thicker than water. Now, you may take a principled view about where you sit on this, about whether or not you bear a responsibility to your kin to in any way make their experience on life, uh, make experience of life on earth better. That's your decision to make. And it's not about, it's not the point about which I want us to uh, focus our time in our podcast today. But the real question I want to ask you is in your walk on this little earth we have here, this little beacon of hope in the solar system where 16 kilometers separate the ground from the outer layer of the atmosphere. And within the 16 kilometers is all forms of life as we know it. In this little fragile space, with whom have you formed blood covenant relationships. My life is actually an outcome of blood covenant relationships. When I was in uh, primary school, I went to a primary school called Egukanyeni at first, and I was taught by a beautiful, I can still remember, she was absolutely stunning. You know, not stunning, not beautiful, stunning. You know, then when you when you put an I at the end of the G, you must realize like Aningi. She was absolutely stunning, uh, and I, I I should also confess that I have in many many years later tried to find this teacher, but I, I couldn't find her. I was taught by this amazing amazing teacher. Her name was Miss Mavimbela, and she she'd come to to Joburg, I think, uh, from Pumalang. And she was my teacher at at Egukanyeni Primary School, and took a liking to me, and uh, would give me this like every every once in a while would have to read in class, and she'd give me the book to read almost routinely. The other kids would get rotated, but I was almost routinely put up to read this book, and I wasn't aware at the time. Only became aware many many years later that it was she who said to my father he needed to move me to a different school because. I was gifted. And so they formed, the first time in my life, somebody who put themselves forward to accelerate my life, even though it didn't benefit them. When I moved to Benoni West School, I met a teacher called Mrs. Stredom. And Mrs. Stredom was the head of the choir. Many years later, she became the principal of Benoni West, and I want to believe she's retired since. Mrs. Stredom also had a patent for cars. She would arrive at school civvies day in a Kushesha 325 IS. This was Mrs. Tredom. And, and for, you know, for the non-South Africans, you must understand that there is a cultural, dis, you know, like uh, uh, juxtaposition of, you know, a middle-aged Afrikaner female arriving in a Model C school in a 325 IS Kushmagesh. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, it's a mash of so many worlds. But Mrs. Stredom was that. She was cool and contemporary and connected. She actually gave an SHIT about us. Uh, in particular, those of us who didn't come from that world, who were not living in the suburbs, who every single day had to teleport ourselves into a different physical world to absorb this education and then again be transported back into the world from whence we came in the townships. Mrs. Stredom identified there that I had a gift, and she invited a man who would become my next blood covenant, called Alan Cock. Later, he became Dr. Alan Cock, and today, sadly, he's late. Alan was a proper Matilda. He was an incredibly gifted young man. 
he comes or came from Boxburg, was raised by Barbie and Sidney Cock. And he started what at the time became the East Rand Boys Choir and many years later became the Eastern Gauteng Boys Choir. The very first time I traveled out of Gauteng was with the East Rand Boys Choir. We traveled on a sojourn to Durban and on the way back and we were sponsored by Wimpy. So we got to eat at all of these Wimpies. And on our way to Durban, we performed at the Durban Theater for a whole week. And so there I was. Mrs. Tredom identifies me in Brinoni West calls Alan Cock, who's auditioning children for this East Rand Boys Choir. He comes to audition. It must have been about 20 of us. And I was one of two that got selected. That started my journey in music, because once we were in the East Rand Boys Choir, we had to take musical lessons. We had to go to classical music training. We had to go read and learn. How do you actually read music? How do you write music? I, that's how I started playing the violin as the instrument, because that was a part of our experience and a part of our learning. Every single uh, Thursday in the evenings and every single Sunday, a Saturday for the full day, we would be at the studio in Boxburg, which today is not dilapidated, sadly. But we would be at that studio practicing. So the reason I know, Oh, Fortuna, Velut Luna, Statu Variabilis is because of Alan Cock. Like, throw anything at me. What do you have? Uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber? Cats? Bring it. I got it. What else do you want to throw at me? Do you want to bring some, you know, P Peter Gabriel? Maybe you want to throw at me some uh, Carmina Bulara, some Karl Orff, or any of these kind of incredible operas that were, you know, just in their time and in their day, the peak, even the musicals. Um, listen to this. Tell me if you know this one, for those of you who are into musicals. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Find me a find, catch me a catch. For those of you who are into musicals, you'll know where that comes from. Or, this is one of my favorites, and I shouldn't admit this, but I'm almost convinced at the end of this podcast, I'm going to have lost all street cred. Like, I, I think, like, before this podcast, you guys had this, like, image of me as this, like, really dangerous guy. Like, really dangerous, rugged guy. And here I am reciting choir verses. But tell me if you know this one. This is the last one. This is the last one. I want to be in America. Okay, by me in America, everything's free in America, for a small fee in America. <laughs> and that exposure for this young boy coming out of a township was because Alan had put me in that space, put me in that environment. It created a blood covenant relationship, somebody who, to this day, Literally, my measure of how cultured I am and how exposed I am was because of Alan. A few years later, I'm now in high school, and I meet Frances Buchanan, the head of the Public Speaking Society. She introduces me to public speaking, trains me, and two years after that, I'm world champion. Then, I meet Petty Kramer, in, our, in my mind, probably the greatest public speaking trainer in South Africa alive today. She trains me, and off the back of that training, I become a world champion public speaker. Then, I meet Brandon O'Donnell, at the time the head of APSA private, private Bank. He meets me, introduces me to the world of financial services and banking, and my career grows. Then I meet Bill Lynch, the founder of Imperial. Do you get the point? My entire life has been a life where I've been elevated by people who gifted me their network, their exposure, their experience, their skill, their passion for nothing in return. The only sense of gratitude that they got was that I became better, that I learned something new. Even my violin teacher, Henrik, amazing, amazing Henrik. But each of these people gave of themselves to me and taught me, and I am today as a consequence of what they allowed themselves to give to me. So, the reason I start every single podcast by saying, Hello, family, is because I believe in this community we are building a blood covenant relationship. I believe we're elevating each other and taking ourselves to greater heights. I look forward to bumping into one or two of you at the, you know, 
international airports in a year or two or three or five's time and you tell me about how far you've come and how incredible your journey has been and how much wealth you've created or how fantastic your relationships are or how great and deep your spiritual relationship with the God that you believe in and serve is. I look forward to those conversations because this is the place where we've created this blood covenant, where our blood is thicker than the water of the wombs from which some of us come. And so the question I'd like for you to ask yourself in this week's podcast is who is it in your life that has played that role? And then, and here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to find them and I'd like you to tell them what they did and where it has positioned you. Find them. Find their number. Give them a call. Send them a WhatsApp. Text. Email. But communicate to them that something they did a year ago or a decade ago has changed your life materially. Blood is thicker than water. I think the greatest relationship we have in the world today is the relationship with ourselves. And I think that that relationship with ourselves is a consequence of the relationships that we have built around the world with those we found ourselves reflected in. And so find those people, the people with whom you've found yourself reflected, and, uh, and tell them thank you. The second thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to look at who you are pouring your cup into. Who are you giving to? Who are you inspiring? Who are you teaching? Who are you empowering? This week, which door did you open for somebody that needed it opened where you benefited nothing from leaving that door slightly ajar that they can finally have that shot, that opportunity? There is somebody listening to this podcast and your job requires that you make decisions. You're making decisions about who to hire. You're making decisions about which company to give an opportunity to. You're making decisions about who to promote and who to fire. I'd like you to ask yourself the question, are you using that power and that authority to elevate people, to inspire people, to engage and educate? Are you using it to form blood covenant relationships that would leave someone's world materially better? In the end, isn't it? That's really what it means to be a human being. In the end, isn't it, when the stories of our lives are being told and the obituaries are being written, when the fields of men and women will gather out into the streets. In the end, isn't it, when the priests take to the pulpit to read for us the scripture upon which they're going to lecture to us about the meaning of life. In the end, when a Saturday service has been booked at the church and we're all here at the end of your life to celebrate the fact that you lived. In the end, what will matter then will not be what you've attained, but it'll be who you elevated. You will be remembered most by the imprint you left in the life of others. Alan Cock is late today, but I remember him fondly because I remember what he did for me and I remember what he exposed me to. The reason today, this is a true fact, I'm able to walk into a boardroom full of billionaires, millionaires, presidents and prime ministers. The reason I'm able to walk into a room with an orchestra and not feel in any way underwater or intimidated. The reason I'm able to hold my own conversation with royalties from all over the world. The reason I'm able to stand on my own two feet with my head held high is because Alan gave me a sense of culture, in particular European culture, that has enabled me to exist in those spaces. So again, I ask the question, who are you elevating? Who are you giving to? Damn, 
what a power podcast, right? Like, I think that's really, really cool. That's really, really cool. So don't forget your homework. Contact those people and make sure that you that you reach out to them. Also, don't forget that we're launching Club 100 this week. If you haven't yet, I suggest you better go to VT Club 100 and send us your information and your details. Uh, but all in all, what I hope for you this week is that you will look for every single opportunity to leave the world a better place than it started as. Start every day with the idea of asking yourself, who can I elevate and who can I reach and who can I teach and who can I inspire? And remember that every single connection and every single opportunity you have is the opportunity to form a blood covenant. At the end of the day, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. All right, friends, from our studios at Sound and Sounds here in Joburg, sayonara. We hope that you've drawn valuable lessons from this week's podcast. To partner with us, visit mygrowthfund.co.za or email info at mygrowthfund.co.za.